Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne. I'm your instructor for 436 and 692. I'm putting together one video as an overview of the two different classes. Um, for the most part, a lot of the assignments and the materials are similar. There'll be some slight variations, but I think that we can talk about the classes and the structure of the class and more importantly, Oaks um, using one video. Uh, this is an online class. And so some of the challenge that we have in teaching online or in blended hybrid learning environments is that because there is a lack of face to face support, a lot of times, you know, learners and instructors feel a little bit of tension because uh, we're not clear as to what the expectations are. So throughout this, uh, what I'll do is I'll put out videos and we'll have some, uh, you know, uh, screencasts. That's what we're watching now. But then there will also be some video conferences so we can stay in touch, even though we might not be seeing each other face to face. Um, the syllabus for the class is open and it's online. It's in a Google Doc as we speak. I shared the Google Doc out with everyone. Um, I set it up so that you have uh, permission to uh, comment on the docs. So if there's anything in here that doesn't make any sense or you have a question, um, we can go in and we can leave a comment. But then also at the same time, um, if there is something that I need to change in the syllabus, um, I don't like changing the syllabus uh, primarily because this is a, in my eyes, you know, as we get started, there might be things that change, but it's not uh, professional to change the syllabus over time especially in a class that is uh, this quick, um, you know, as in these online summer sessions. Um, so if we're looking at the, the syllabus, um, the, the description and the objectives up top, you can take a look at. But I wanted to take a little bit of time to look at the, uh, the schedule. I wanted to look at the assignments. I want to look at OAKS and how I set up OAKS and then focus on how you can get in touch with me if you have questions or concerns. Um, so if we're looking at the uh, syllabus itself, we, we can see that we start up on the 5th and then we go to the, the 3rd, I believe, of August. So what that means is if we're looking at the, uh, the calendar, we have a pretty quick cadence for the class. So our class is going to start up on Wednesday. Um, I've set this up so that we have four modules. We pretty much have four good weeks uh, to work. So we've whittled this down to four modules or four weeks. I'm viewing the modules as starting up on Wednesdays and then ending uh, on Tuesday night at midnight. Um, I'm just saying Tuesday end of day. I'm not staying up till 1201 to see if that if you've turned in assignments or not. But please understand that Oaks is basically giving timestamps to everything that we do. So our weeks, week one, module one will start on Wednesday the 5th. It'll end on the 11th at the end of the day. Then week two, module two, will go from 12 to the 18th, then the 19th through the 25th, uh, and then we'll go from the 26th through the 1st. Obviously, the semester ends on the 3rd. Um, what I think is that we basically give ourselves a little bit of time for module four to end, and then everyone needs an extra couple days to finish up the websites, get materials in, finish makeup work. I know that these summer sessions um, it's a it's a sprint to the end. Um, so there's time built in there for us to do that. And we'll have more talk about this as the class proceeds. One of the things that I always try to be aware of and let you know about is when I owe grades to the university, um, because that is the be all end all for me. Um, but we'll talk more about that. And you will have lots of com uh, communication from me letting you know when things are due and if things are missing that need to get turned in. Go back Back to the syllabus, I'm going to scroll down and a lot of the structure is built in. But if we look at the syllabus, um, there's a couple major assignments and everything intersects uh, with one another. So everything builds upon one another. So the, the main project for this class is a website. So we'll be constructing a website that will be the digital portfolio for you, for your current and future classroom. Um, it'll serve as a digital portfolio, but also an indicator of your digital identity as an educator. So if you already have a website that you've used and you've created in other classes, you can add on to it here. Um, if you've never built a website before, this would be a good opportunity for you to take a little bit of time 
and really dive deep and build up something that I think you need to have um, in your current you know, and future profession. Uh, so the website is one of the key components. We'll talk a lot about who you are, who you'd like to be, and we'll talk about that in this video. It's in Oaks already, so we'll share that out there. Um, the One of the things that I'll say last before I move on is one of the things you got to keep in mind is that the website is something that will constantly be in a state of revision and iteration over the course of the semester. So it's not like we can sit down and just build the website on day one and then it's perfect. You're going to be constantly improving upon it. My website has for a little over 400 posts right now, and I've built and rebuilt and blown up and rebuilt my website numerous times. And I can easily tell you the things that I don't like about it and I want to change right now. I will tell you at the end of the semester, you will have a list of things that you personally have identified that you want to change still on your website and all you need is time. That's the nature of the beast, okay? So we can't view this as the website will be perfect as of the end and you will turn it in for you know the A plus. That's not gonna happen, um, but you need to add content. So because we're building this website up over time and we're, we're continuing to add content to the website, one of the things that we have to remember is that you will turn in other assignments for this class. Those other assignments, they will, at the end of the semester, they will live on your website. So you'll add them over to your website. So there will be a constant process of, as you turn in other materials, you'll do those materials in a Google Doc, you'll share the Google Doc in the discussion forums with the other people in the class, Everyone else will read and review and give feedback to your work that you submit. I will give you feedback and review the materials that you submit in the Google Doc. You will take that content in the Google Doc, you will polish it up, and then as your website advances, as your website grows over the semester, so week two, three, four, as it becomes more polished, then you start copy pasting stuff from the Google Docs over to pages and posts on your uh, website. Okay, so we're going to be building the website over the course of the semester, but then at the same time, you're going to be doing other work because you need content to add to that website. So to be, you're you're going to be balancing the two using Google Docs as like a holding place for your work as it gets polished and ready to go into your website as you polish up your website. Okay, and we'll keep talking about that, but I want you to understand how they uh, interconnect. When you build up a website, you also need to have content that you add to your website. So that process is going to be a process of blogging. You will be reflecting over time on what you're researching and reading. Um, you will be creating lesson plans that you'll add to your website. You'll have a unit plan that you add to your website. So you'll constantly be getting content ready to go. Part of the content is going to be uh, blog posts, which are basically reflections of what you're reading and searching for and learning about through the course. Um, so that will live as Google Docs and then move over to your website when it's ready to go. The other thing that we will use is a open source uh, annotation tool known as Hypothesis. So Hypothesis will allow us to annotate and mark up. It's almost like a set of, if you were highlighting and marking up and taking notes in a, in a textbook as you read, a, a paper copy, or if you're marking up PDFs, the same structure, but imagine that happening across the web. Imagine you're doing the same thing in websites across PDFs. You're going to be marking up text over time. So we're going to use Hypothesis. Uh, I have a link or two there on how to use Hypothesis. Um, I will put together a video that makes it much easier to understand how to get Hypothesis up and running, especially for this class. But what the structure will look like for this is you'll be reading and reviewing materials, marking up those materials over time, taking notes. You will be able to see what other people in class are taking notes on. Um, we will have some discussions about the text in those notes, um, and then you'll reflect in your blog post. But this will be a little bit more clear as we're, we're putting the content together in the modules in Oaks. This class also focuses on 
project-based learning. There is a strong technology thread running through all of this because I think that technology and instructional uses of tech turbocharge project-based learning. So you'll see them come together. But then also we need to figure out ways that we support that learning and we basically uh, provide evidence of learning over time. So we'll talk a little bit about the web literacies. Uh, we'll talk about the ISTE standards. Um, we will start by talking about um, understanding by design and backwards planning. Um, but the, the thing to think about is in the course, you will build three lesson plans. You'll have three lesson plans that think about instructional uses of technology. You're going to study different tools and figure out, okay, how would I use this tool in my classroom instructionally? And you write out a lesson plan and you de you'll develop any and all materials on how to use that tool and how to share it with your students and get them to use it. Okay. So think about this. You've got your, you've got your website that you're building up. Um, on your website, you have a couple blog posts where you are reflecting and you're documenting your thing over time. You're going to have three lesson plans along with teaching materials that go with those lesson plans. These are the things that should be based for based. Uh, they should be built for your current and future students. These should be things that you can walk into a classroom right now or in a couple of years, walk in there and teach to your kids. So it should be grade level appropriate. There should be content area specific um, and they should be student interest, uh, student inquiry uh, led. Um, the last real big piece of this is we want to have one big tent to cover up this piece of instruction that you're building. So the three lesson plans are good, but lesson plans living by themselves don't do much. We have to get the other end of the spectrum in terms of lesson planning and that's planning for longer periods of time other than a day or a period or, or, or a block in our day. We want to think about unit plans. Um, and so what I want you to think about is, okay, what is a student interest, an inquiry-based learning unit that you want your students to dive into that they will be excited to, to learn about and you'll be excited to teach? So we're going to think about developing an internet inquiry unit plan. And this is going to be something that we'll continue to unpack. Um, but this is a larger unit that will spread anywhere from four or five days to I've seen them go for six to eight weeks. You decide what your interests are and what your students' interests might be. You're going to build a unit plan that frames that all out. I'll give examples of what this might look like, um, but this is going to live on our website as well. So I want to go from syllabus, okay? Um, and you can read more through this. Um, I have the calendar scheduled and, and you have the, the calendar coincides with materials that are in Oaks. But I want to take a quick peek at Oaks to let you know what to expect. Once again, the structure of 436 and 692 are, are similar. You come in and you go to the course home. You'll get like the general news section. Uh, the news section will give you an overview of the class. What I'll do is I'll use this for announcements. I'll give you maybe two to three announcements per week, basically just clearing things up, keeping us moving, letting us know what the next thing is that we need to address. Um, but the real meat of the course is once we get into the content. So once I load the content page, I'll have an overview um, and I basically say, here's the syllabus. This is the way to get in touch with me. Hangouts, I'll explain that in a minute. Um, and then this video that I'm recording now after it's done will live right underneath of this so that you can uh, review this. So you might be watching this right now on this page. Um, as we move down, upcoming events is going to list the assignments that are due. Once again, all of the assignments that you turn in, those will be written in Google Docs. You will share the Google Doc into a discussion forum. Once it's in the discussion forum, other people will review it in the class and I, I will review it there. We'll talk about that in a minute. But once we get down to the content, you see there's four modules. Each module is broken up into an introductory level. So the intro level basically gives learning outcomes. I will you know, give you an idea of where we're headed with that module. I might have a video or a, or a lecture built in there. I also have... Uh, each module is broken into read, watch, discuss, do. So we have four areas. All modules are broken up into those components. When you enter a module, um, 
I want you to, to have a certain structure as you work your way through it. So if we look at read, read is five posts, five materials, websites that I want you to check out. Um, Keep in, mind, keep in mind that as you read these materials, you're going to be using Hypothesis to read across and annotate and mark up these materials. Another thing that I want you to think about is I'm giving you five uh, pieces that I want you to go read, but you don't have to go read these. Okay, You can choose to read all five. You can read three out of the five. One of the skills that we need to build on our own, but then also our students need to build up, is our students need to be able to search and sift through online text and figure out what's the important stuff. Um, and so there's a little bit of metacognitive uh, aspects of reading, but I want you to think about what's the important stuff and what do I need to know? And what do I not know? And where do I go for more information? So as you read through the introduction, and as you start to read through these pieces, you're going to annotate and mark things up in Hypothesis. But then also you might say, okay, well, I read the Understanding by Design pieces, but it doesn't make sense to me. So then you search online and you try to find more sources about Understanding by Design. Or you might say, okay, I already know about project-based learning. I don't really want to read that. I don't need to read that. I know what it's all about. Go find other materials on other subjects that you might need. OK, so you are in control of your learning. You decide what you want to read, not read, how much you need to read. Um, and you understand you you decide when you've learned enough, you've learned enough. OK, um, and I think that's an important part as we figure out, as we maintain control of our own learning and, and comprehension. So that's the reading section. I have five there. Those five are a starting point. Um, they are not an exhaustive list. Um, but they're a good list to get us started for module one and watch. I have five videos listed. Um, that's not true because this is a playlist. So there's a couple more videos baked in there, but I have five videos all are on YouTube and they give you an overview of some of the content that's out there and what we're focusing on for module one. Once again, you don't have to watch all five or or more because I know there's more baked in here. Um, you can watch as, as many or as few, um, but then also there's other videos out there. There's other content that's far better than what I've listed here. So you might find something that works better for you. Uh, when we move to discuss, the discuss section of this module basically is indicating that you are reading across these different uh, sources. You are searching and sifting and you are synthesizing across these sources. You're using hypothesis to the best of your ability to make sense of what you're reading over time. And you'll be able to see what other people are marking up and annotating. You'll be able to have discussions about the text in the text. Um, but this is not an exhaustive list of all of the things you need to pay attention to. So you read across these materials, try to make sense of where uh, all of this is headed. Um, and then you're going to synthesize that in the next part of this in the do section. Um, once again, with hypothesis, many of us do not have experience with reading in this way. Um, so it'll be a little bit of a paradigm shift for many of us to think about reading. Um, it is my expectation that you try to use it and you, you make it happen this semester. I'll have materials and tutorials out there for you. Um, and I'm here to answer any and all questions to get you up and running. Um, but hypothesis is a way for us to make the, the process of reading a little bit more open so we can see where people are and what they're reading. The last piece, so module one, we have the intro, we have read, watch, discuss, do is the deliverables or the assignment for each module. So up top, I basically once again tell you that you will be building up your website. The website is something that you'll build up over time. The website is not really quote unquote due until the end of the course, but you're going to want to constantly be adding and building up and playing with that website. And we'll have times where people can, um, you know, we'll, we'll present our website and get feedback on the website and talk through, you know, what we have in the website. Um, so that's there and, and content that you build will be built in Google Docs and shared with people for feedback with the peers in the class and myself for feedback and you'll polish and get it ready to go. But in terms of what you're creating, this is the first three chunks that we're working on in module one. 
first of all, um, I want you to start up a Google Doc, and I, I tell you in here how I want you to title the thing and where to share it in the appropriate discussion thread. But you're basically doing a six-word memoir. You're opening up a Google Doc, and you are writing down six words that identify who you are, who you would like to be. Um, and this is something that will possibly change over time. But I want you to start thinking about who you are, what type of person you are. I want you to identify yourself before you go and really start building your website and creating this digital identity or recreating this digital identity. So I want you to write down six words, who you are, share that in the group. Um, some people add more content. They add a paragraph and explain things or they have links to other content online. But I want you to think about who you are, who you would like to be, because we'll come back to this a lot. At the same time, this week, I want you to start to look at some of the free services that are online that you can use to create your digital identity. So in the past, I've used Google Sites and Wikispaces a lot. I still use them in classes. I've used, uh, I've had students use Wix and Weebly. Uh, they're all great services. Um, the only reason I know about Weebly is because I've had students over the years use it and bring it to me and it works well for, the per for our purposes. Um, for this class, I will focus on WordPress. I'm going to focus on WordPress.com. I'm going to teach you how to use WordPress.com. Um, I will give you granular advice on WordPress. You are, you are by all means, you know, you can use, if you so choose, Google Sites, Wikispaces, Wix, Weebly. You can use one of the other ones if that's what you want to use. I will still help you with it. The materials that I provide throughout the semester are going to be based on WordPress.com. Um, so that's the decision that you make. So in this first week, bookmark an hour or two to play with Wix, Weebly, Google Sites, Wikispaces, WordPress. Play with them. Sign in. Create an account. They're all free. You don't need to and you should not be paying anything for any of them. But create an account and start to build a little website and figure out what it looks like. What do you like? What does it look like on the inside and the editing part of it? What does it look on the outside? Um, and start to play with it and figure out, okay, what does this look like? Um, what, it, what makes the most sense for you? That's one of the first assignments. Um, then the second real assignment for module one is a reflection post. Um, Keep in mind that through module one, you're reading these five websites and marking them up and annotating. You are also searching and sifting online and finding out more about the, the content that we're focusing on in this first module. You're watching the videos and trying to learn more about project-based learning, about web literacies. You're thinking about understanding by design. You're thinking about student interests and technology use um, in the classroom. And you're searching and sifting online and you're, you're learning a lot about um, what possible futures there are in education in these spaces. And most importantly, what this might look like in your future, current or future classroom. So as you look at all of these materials, the second real assignment for module one is I want you to synthesize all that together. So you've searched, you've sifted, you've had discussions and hypothesis, you've thought a little bit. Now I want you to synthesize it all together. What does it all mean? And if you look at the post, I don't give you a prompt. I don't give you a question that you need to go out and answer. Okay. My hope is that this is inquiry-based learning. You identify what is of interest and, and inquiry, uh, what is of interest to you. Like what is the, the, the salient pieces of everything that I presented here? You decide what you want to respond to. Um, and so as you synthesize over time, you make sense of what you've learned. You quote things that you found online. You have links out to things you shared on Hypothesis. You share all of these materials with us so that we can see the digital breadcrumbs you left behind as you were reading online. The third uh, piece that you work on in module one is you start to think about that unit plan, that internet inquiry unit plan that you're going to develop. And we have a unit project work that you're going to make a copy of and you'll archive your learning over time and you'll document um, and put this all together. The other thing that I want you to do is before you start that, I want you to start to think about what is the topic or the theme that you'll focus on with your unit plan. So I take 
the guidance from understanding by design and I, and I try to make sense of, okay, what will this look like? Uh, so as you read through, you think of the UBD process and you start to think about, okay, what might I like to have students do and what does the ending of this unit look like? What do I want to bring kids cognitively? Where do I want them to end up? So before you start that process, you start to answer these questions and these checklists and make sense of the direction you want to head. This lives in a Google Doc. You can start to plan out in the workbook, and it's probably a good idea to start the workbook this week. Um, we don't really focus on it till module two, but you can start now. But a Google Doc with these materials, and then your peers and I will give you feedback um, about the, the unit plan that you're starting to develop. So once again, if we look at, we have four modules in the course, we have four weeks. Um, module one, all of the modules have like an initial overview um, with materials to frame our discussion for the module. The most important stuff is we're digging into, uh, you know, content that you should read and make more sense of. And this is helping direct your inquiry for the module. Uh, content to watch online. We have things um, that a uh, guidance for you, just an hypothesis as you discuss online. And then finally, module one has three deliverables, three real deliverables, other than, you know, playing with the, the different website construction tools and exploring that a little bit. Um, so if we go back up to the overview, and this will be, uh, this won't really change that much. But in the course home, I'll have new announcements um, that basically talk about what we're doing. Uh, we will update this two, maybe three times. Um, while we're still on Oaks, I just want to take a look at the discussions. Keep in mind when you submit work to me, it'll be in a Google Doc. You will submit it. So here is the website development. You submit a new thread. I tell you exactly how to title it. Your peers will review and give feedback on your work. You will review and give feedback on your peers' work. I will give feedback on it. You're gonna use all of that to polish and fine tune your content before it goes live on your website. So in the different assignments, all of assignments will live here. But then we also have a water cooler area for the discussion. So if there's comments, questions, issues for the good of the order, you can share it here. The last thing I really wanna talk about is um, when we have online classes, there are times that we are frustrated because we don't have that face-to-face -face support. Um, and so I, I appreciate the persistence and flexibility that all of you will use as you work online. If you need me at any point, I am there for you. I will put the announcements into Oaks as a way to coach us along and scaffold us. I'll put in videos um, just like the one I'm doing here to talk through my thinking. I also want to put together once a week, have an open office hour where we video conference it. You are free to show up or not, but we can basically have discussion and dialogue to figure out, you know, what's working and not working. I can answer questions and make sure that you're all happy. Um, but then also, if there's an issue, uh, you can email me. That's probably the easiest, quickest way to get in touch with me. It's not the quickest, but it's easiest. Um, there's no point in calling my office phone. Um, especially during the summer, I will be in and out of the office. Most of my time, I'll just be at home working on materials and answering questions and grading assignments. But the office phone right now, it'll save a message voicemail at my office and I don't see it until I get back to my office. So the best thing to do is email me or really the best way to get in touch is through Google Hangout. Okay. So if you Google Google Hangouts or go to hangouts.google.com. You can sign in using your CFC credentials and you can find me with, with my CFC credentials. So you get that O'Burn oh, I at CFC. You can find me and grab my CFC credentials. And you can put this on Android. So your Android phone, tablet. If you have iOS, like an iPhone or an iPad, you can use Hangouts on your phone. You can use the Chrome app. Um, but basically, this is what it's going to look like. You can come in and I'm signed in now using my CFC credentials and make sure, yep. So I'm signed in with my CFC stuff. You can see students from the past that have texted me or had questions. 
Um, as soon as you text me, this basically buzzes my computer and my phone and everything else. Um, and I, unless I'm driving, I respond to this and I just respond right away. So the materials are there. You can get in touch with me, send me questions, comments, concerns. Uh, you can text me through the computer. I'll respond right away. And if it's a real big issue, I can hop into a video call and answer the call, the, the question right away and make sure that you're happy and there's no issues. Um, so that's hangouts.google.com. Probably the, uh, the quickest way to get in touch with me if there is a question or a concern. So you have multiple ways to get in touch. I'm there for you to support you in this. Um, and once again, my name is Ian O'Byrne. I'm really looking forward to this and uh, looking forward to growing with you over the summer and enjoying uh, this bit of time before we get back into the fall. Uh, and I'll see you online in Oaks.